Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So inshallah before I start, I will recite maybe some Quran and then we do it inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa kulla insanin alzamnahu ta'irahu fi unuqih. Wa nukhriju lahu yawma al-qiyamati kitabay yalqahu man shura. Iqra' kitabak. كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا متر فيها ففسقوا فيها فحق عليها القول فدمرناها تدميرا وكم أهلكنا من القرون من بعد نوح وكفى بربك بذنوب عباده خبيرا بصيرا من كان يريد العاجل تعجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد ثم جعلنا له جهنم يصلاها مذموما مدحورا ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والجنة للموحدين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام الأكملان الأتمان الركن الأعظم أفضل من تقدم ومن تأخر وعلى آله وأصحابه الغر الميامين يا رب اللهم ارحم ضعفاءنا واغفر أمورنا واختم بالباقيات الصالحات أعمالنا رب عجز الطبيب فداونا وفسد الزمان فنجنا إلهي حملت نوحا على ذات ألواح ودسر يا ذا العزة والجبروت ورددت يعقوب بصره بعدما بيضت عيناه يا ذا الملك والملكوت وجمعت بينه وبين ابنه يوسف قبل أن يموت ونجيت موسى في التابوت وحملت يونس في بطن الحوت ونجيت الحبيب محمدا بنفس العنكبوت سبحانك سبحانك أنت الحي الذي لا يموت أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقربوا الزنا إنه كان فاحشة وساء سبيلا وقال تعالى يا أيها النبي إذا جاءك المؤمنات يبايعنك على أن لا يشركن بالله شيئا ولا يسرقن ولا يزنين ولا يقتلن أولادهن ولا يأتين ببهتان يفترينه بين أيديهن وأرجلهن ولا يعصينك في معروف فبايعهن واستغفر لهن الله إن الله غفور رحيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من يضمن ما بين لحيي وما بين فخذي أضمن له الجنة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters and dear listeners in Islam It is a beautiful environment to see this that we have young, young children, 
boys and girls, mashallah, that in this part of the world, it is amazing for us to see that they are dressed in sunnah. This is the effort that we have to make. It is really pleasing because sometimes there are institutions and they are making an effort, but they are leaving out the apparent dress code of Islam, the apparent dress code of how we dress as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the deen of Islam and this deen is complete. Whether we live in Africa, whether we live in America, whether it is the Stone Age, whether it is the Camel Age, or whether it is the time right before Qiyamah, this deen is complete. This deen belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has completed this deen. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا This heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, this heart has to be filled with Allah, with the greatness of Allah, with the power of Allah, with the majesty of Allah. On a daily basis, we have to make mudhakara with our children. We have to make mudhakara in our homes. We have to remind those that are staying in our homes and we have to remind our children about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to speak about Allah, speak about the greatness of Allah, speak about the power of Allah, speak about the majesty of Allah, that Allah is in control of everything. Khaliku kulli shay, maliku kulli shay, khabirun bi kulli shay, latifun bi kulli shay, وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Every day, every day, we have to instill in our small children's minds the power of Allah, the grandeur of Allah, the highness of Allah, that Allah is the doer of everything. He does as He wishes, when He wishes, how He wishes. This heart that Allah has given us has to be filled with the greatness of Allah. أَقْوَى مِنْ كُلِّ قَوِي أعز من كل عزيز أجل من كل جليل أكرم من كل كريم أعلم من كل عليم Every day we have to speak about it so much so much that this heart becomes filled with the greatness of Allah This heart that Allah has given us This heart that Allah has given us This heart does not know anything of this world It does not recognize the things of this world this heart only recognizes Allah. Allah. Quran testifies and states, Allah. Bi dhikri Allahi tatma innu al-qulub. Allah. Bi dhikri Allahi tatma innu al-qulub. When a person moves away from Allah, when a person forgets Allah, and they slip away for years and years and years, they go in the wrong direction, and then they think, if I make money, my heart will get satisfied. The heart does not know money. The heart does not know the value of wealth. The heart does not know the degrees from different universities. The soul that Allah has given us, this ruh, this heart that Allah has given us, this heart does not know the beauty of music. It does not know what is music. The music affects the mind. The music affects the body. The wealth that a person gets, it affects his mind and his body. His degrees that he gets in this world, they affect his mind and his body and his status in a specific company. This does not affect the heart. The heart only recognizes Allah. The heart recognizes Allah. That's why the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very clear about this matter. There is a piece of flesh in this body. There is a piece of flesh in this body. If this piece of flesh is correct, the whole body is correct. The seeing is correct. The hearing is correct. The speaking is correct. Every action of that human being is correct. And when that piece of flesh is not correct, when that piece of flesh is incorrect, then the sight is also incorrect. Every sight of that person is in the disobedience of Allah. The hands are in the disobedience of Allah. The hearing is not correct. The thinking is not correct. The speaking is not correct. Why? Why it's not correct? Because the heart is not correct. It's all linked to the heart. It is all linked to the heart. That's why we have to make that effort on the heart that the heart has to be corrected. 
The heart does not know the things around us. Sometimes we think that if we get more things in our life, we will be more happier. This happiness is just artificial happiness. It is just for a temporary period of time. The true happiness is when this heart recognizes Allah. This heart recognizes the greatness of Allah. So this heart has to recognize Allah. Today there is an effort in the world, in every line, in every field, especially to the younger generation. The younger generation and living in these countries here where there are so many fitten, so many trials and tribulations, so many things that are around us and are calling us, that are pulling us away from Allah, that are calling us into the wrong direction. And there are certain things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us as the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we should try and stay away from certain things. There are certain trials, there are certain tribulations, there are certain fitan, and if we have to protect ourselves from those fitan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one hadith has mentioned, Inna dunya hulwatun khadira wa inna allaha mustakhlifukum fiha fayandura kayfa ta'amaloon. There are two great fitnas that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken of. The one is the fitna of this dunya. The one is the fitna of earning. The more a person gets, the more he becomes drunk. He becomes drunk with the wealth of this world. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in the hadith, لَوْ أَنَّ لِبْنِ آدَمَ وَادِيًا مِّن ذَهَبَ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ وَادِيًا if he has one entire valley of gold, his desire in his heart will be how I can get a second valley, how I can get a third valley, how I can get a fourth valley. Every person is only going and running and running and running for this dunya, for this world that is not even equivalent to the wing of a mosquito. Working for hours and hours and hours from eight till late and late till eight. He doesn't know day from night. He doesn't know night from day. He hasn't eaten a, a simple meal with his family. He hasn't been at home with his wife and children. Why? Because he's earning and earning and earning. And what we have to get, it is already muqaddar. It was written 50,000 years before we came into existence. Allah already wrote our taqdeer. He already wrote how much we're going to eat on every grain of rice. The person that is going to eat it, it's already written. But we have this desire in us that we want to make more. This is one fitna. This is one fitna. And one great trial that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed. Fattaqud dunya. And the other trial that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made mention is Wattaqun nisa. And the fitna and the trial of woman. And this is for both. The trial and fitna for men is woman. And the trial and fitna for women is men. Both of us, both of, this, uh, both of them, the men and the ladies, they both have a fitna that is in front of us. And the initial stages, the initial stages to this fitna is this culture that is being created in the world of the culture of music. The culture of music is the culture that is the stepping stone towards zina. The stepping stone towards committing haram, the stepping stone to that is this form of listening to music. That's why the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, Al-ghina'u yunbitu al-nifaqa fil qalb, kama yunbitu al-ma'u al-zara'a. That's why they have the culture of listening to music. Thousands and thousands of people with the earphones in their ears and jiving and moving this is the standing posture, the vertical posture of the fulfillment of desires. And then they have the horizontal desire that comes after that. Every circle you will see, they play different kinds of music. This music, this haram music that is being played, this haram music that is being played, it instigates a person. It takes a person towards haram. It takes a person towards the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It takes a person towards what is forbidden. And in the summit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these qualities and conditions will come. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in the narration of Tirmidhi, that لَيَأْتِيَنَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي كَمَا أَتَىٰ عَلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ حَذْوَ النَّعْلِ بِالنَّعْلِ حَتَّىٰ 
حتى إن كان منهم من أتى أمه علانية لكان في أمتي من يصنع ذلك such severe times will come such amount of fitna will come in this ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam whatever took place in Bani Israel will take place in my ummah حذ والنعل بالنعل wherever they put their foot this Ummah will put their foot on the same place Hatta that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so much fitan will take place that in Bani Israel in Bani Israel if a person shared the bed with his mother there will be people in this Ummah that will also commit incest so much fitan will come in this Ummah so much amount and the free and availability of mixing of genders, of mixing of boys and girls, of mixing of young, young people. They have created a cult. They have created a culture. They have created an environment that this is taking the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam towards being in the highest form of the disobedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's why Islam is pure. Islam is real. Islam has the solution to these problem to these situations. Wallahi respected brothers and elders. We listening to the news for the last maybe few months. For the last few months, there are major, major, major celebrities in this country. Major, huge celebrities that are world renowned. World renowned celebrities. Wallahi when the media just touches sometimes on small, small portions of their life, small portions of their life, such stench comes out, such evil comes out. The media touches on their life, on small, small things. The media says this happened in this year about so and so, in their private life, and see what filth comes out. After marriage, what filth comes out. How evil the society is, where people are idolizing them, People are honoring and revering such people, but inside and what they have done, they are not even good to be human beings. When you actually see how, how they live their lives with such immorality, such shamelessness life, shameless lives that they have lived. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that when this fitan will take place, the fitna of zina will come in this ummah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned وَالْأَوْجَاعُ الَّتِي لَمْ تَكُنْ مَضَتْ فِي أَسْلَافِهِمْ الَّذِي مَضَوْ You will see such sicknesses. Such sicknesses will come into existence that this ummah have not heard of those sicknesses ever before. Such sicknesses. Such things. We don't need to even elaborate on these issues. These are things that are taking place. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited us. The Quran is very clear. It does not say do not commit zina. But the Quran teaches us wala taqrabu zina. Don't even go close. Don't even go close to the filthy act of zina. And how does it start? The Mufassirin mentioned how does it start? It starts another. Another, nadrun, fabtisamun, fakalamun, famawidun. This is the tartib. This is how it goes. This is how it starts. First, it is just one glance, one look. And that look, another, fabtisamun. And then from that one look, that's why it has been prohibited from us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in the hadith. النذر سهم من سهام إبليس من تركها مخافتي أبدلته إيمانا يجد حلاوته في قلبه that the look it is actually a poisonous arrow from the arrows of shaitan it is a poisonous arrow from the arrows of shaitan and nobody can say they are free about it and their heart is very clean and you know it does not affect me if it does not affect you brother and sister there is something wrong with you you need to go check yourself up at the doctor. There's something wrong. Because every person, every person, the ego and the inside of that person will push that person, will take that person. This is the carnal desire. This is the nafs that Allah has created in this human being. Like we have the nafs of eating, hunger takes us to a certain point. We become so hungry, we are forced. 
and a person will be going will eat when a person is thirsty then the thirst force him that he needs to drink this is a carnal desire we are insan we are human beings we are not angels we are not malaika we are normal human beings allah has created in this human being this desire so it begins another then it is the smile from the from the side looking from the looking another fabtisamun and then it is a smile it is a kind gesture it is just that little move that the person makes fabtisamun fakalamun and then from there it goes on to speaking and chatting and famawidun and then the dating starts the dating starts from there this is how the plan is that's why the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us that when you eat your food eat your food with those that have taqwa when you eat your food when you want to invite someone invite those people that have taqwa because the whole ideology and the entire system is around going when you're going you're going to have something to eat and this going to eat got to do with those people that are fajir those people that are the immoral people of society this is where this whole culture starts so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this aspect was so clean about his life once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was in i'tikaf he was staying in the masjid it was his practice in the month of ramadan for 10 days the last 10 days some narration say the last 20 days for 30 days he would stay in i'tikaf in his masjid and he would not leave the masjid one of his wife safiya radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to speak to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was speaking with his own wife two sahaba radhiyallahu anhuma they were passing by they were passing by and they were discussing something amongst themselves rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called them back he said ala rislikuma ala rislikuma the two of you can you just hold on a, mo a moment i just want to discuss something with you they said oh nabi of allah what is it rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said let me just clarify the matter this is my wife and i'm not speaking to any strange woman i'm not speaking to any strange woman the sahaba said oh nabi of allah we do not even have the thought in our mind that you are doing something wrong we don't even have the thought that you are doing something wrong rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no shaitan is flowing in your blood shaitan is flowing in your bloodstream and shaitan will make evil thoughts of you about me and if you think evil about the nabi of allah then your iman is gone If you think evil of the Nabi of Allah, your iman is gone. But I just wanted to clear the air. I just wanted to clear the situation. You seeing me speaking to this woman? This is my wife, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the mawdi' al tahm, in the in the time when there was some possibility that there could be some accusation against him, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam clarified, and he made the situation very very clear. Also Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's hadith teaches us when he when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taken from Mi'raj the narration states that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam seen certain people seen certain people they were eating uh, they were there was pure good wholesome food for them pure good wholesome food and while they were eating this pure good wholesome food they started on the side there was they were not eating this wholesome food they were eating rotten food harmful food on the side and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked them why are you eating this rotten why are they eating this food that is gone off and they not eating this good food jibril alaihi salam said to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam these people who are in your ummah they had the halal families the halal spouses but they did not opt for that they went to commit zina and because of that this is what is going to be the punishment in another narration it is stated that in jahannam the people of jahannam will get a very evil smell a very bad smell even the people of jahannam will not be able to tolerate the smell it will be so severe the smell they will ask malik the doorkeeper of jahannam where is the smell coming from 
it will be said to them, this is because this is coming out from the private parts of those people that committed zina. In this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jahannam will make an evil smell come out from them because of the action that they did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one young boy, they told me I only have a few minutes left. One young boy came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Young boy, the environment is difficult, the environment is challenging. It is very, very uh, difficult to be in the environment. He asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Nabi of Allah, Lama ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, in his tafsir, he has mentioned the narration. He asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Nabi of Allah, give me permission to commit zina. The Sahaba became very, very upset and they took it very offensive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mah, mah, leave him, leave him alone, bring him to me. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him simple questions to make him understand the gravity of the action. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, will you like someone to make zina with your mother? He said, la, no. And may my, may my life be sacrificed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, and what about your sister? What about your aunt? What about your daughter? He said, no for all of them. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his hand on this person's chest, this young sahabi's chest. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his hand on his chest. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the dua, Allahumma ghfir dhamba, Allahumma ghfir dhamba, Allahumma ghfir dhamba, O oh Allah, you forgive his sins, wa tahir qalba, and you purify his heart, wa ahsin farja, and you keep his organs pure, you keep his organs pure. This Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this actually, this dua, we should try and recite it for ourselves. And we should try and recite this dua also for our children. Because the environment they are living in is an environment of evil. It's an environment which is very, very difficult to survive in this environment if the iman is not strong, if the environment is not made, if there is no ta'aleem in those homes, if those children do not understand their priority and who we are and what we are, then the outside environment is all willing and embracing to take everyone into those environments. Don't think that we come from Muslim families and Muslim backgrounds and Muslim countries, we are safe. Once a person comes into these environments, nobody is safe. Nobody is safe because the environment is more strong. The environment is more powerful. That's why we have to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read for this young sahabi. Allahumma ghfir dhamba wa tahir qalba wa ahsin farja. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also promised May yadman li ma bayna lihyay wa ma bayna fakhidhay adman lahu al-jannah. It is the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that those people that will protect what is between their jaws, their tongue, they protect what they speak, they protect how they speak. Words when they come out, they come out very kind, very nice, in a justful way, in a beautiful way. That's why you see our tongue, our tongue has 32 locks, all the locks. Before you speak, you have to open these locks and then we have the lips. These are the shutter doors, the gates. Before we speak, we have to open it and then the words come out. When we speak, we have to speak like roses are coming out, not like thorns are coming out. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we have to protect our tongue, our tongue and what we speak. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and assist us and protect us in the environment that we are living. No one can say they are safe. No one can say they are safe until they leave this world in a condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, help us, and make your community grow, and make it a means of protection, especially for the young generation that are living in this time of fitan and fasad, different trials and tribulations, the trials and tribulations of the outside environment. And today we are not even safe because of the cell phones. The fitan is also inside the house. The fitna is inside the home. The fitna is inside the bedroom. There is no one that can say they are safe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of understanding. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.